Hello everybody, and we're going to take a look at Chapter 7 Appendix Slides on the Indifference Curve. And the Indifference Curve is an alternative to the theory of utility maximization. Remember, it is difficult to measure utility. We don't really have any units we can assign to it. So Indifference Curve Analysis does the following. It requires a consumer to be able to rank combinations of products, so let's say product A and product B in terms of preference, and once this has been established, we can make indifference curves. And then we can add to the model how much money the consumer has to spend, along with the product prices, and one can make a demand curve. And the demand curve will ultimately be based on a consumer's preferences for a product, its price, and their budget. So this is another way to take into account measuring utility and budgeting. Remember, economics, there's no necessarily right or wrong answer, and there's many theories, um, sometimes many theories that explain the same thing. This is an example of it. So a budget line is the combination of products that a consumer can buy with their income. So we're gonna look at a two product budget line here. So we're gonna look at product B and product A. And the slope is the ratio of the price of B to the price of A. And location varies with income changes and location varies with price changes. So we're gonna take a look here. So here is an example of a budget line. So in this case, someone has $12 to spend and product A costs $1.50 and product B costs $1. So they could buy at most eight units of B, 12, excuse me, 12 units of B, eight units of A, or some combination in between. The yellow shaded area, remember, is what is considered attainable and anywhere in this white space here is beyond the budget of this consumer. So along the line, you're using all of your money. Anywhere below the line in the yellow space, you have money left over, which is certainly possible. You cannot spend more than your budget or in the white space. So here's what an indifference curve would look like. So an indifference curve is a combination of two products that yield the same amount of total utility. So the consumer is indifferent as to what combination to purchase. So let's say you want a Big Mac and fries and you get a lot of utility from that, but you'd also get the same amount of utility as a Big Mac and chicken nuggets. Let's say a Big Mac and fries and a Big Mac and chicken nuggets give you identical utility. So what that means is you would be indifferent uh, if I handed you the Big Mac or fries or the Big Mac or nuggets. If you really got the exact same utility from both of those combinations, you would be really indifferent to what one someone gave you. So all we care about here is the total utility. So the consumer is indifferent to what combination to purchase. It's downward sloping, convex to the origin, and it reflects the marginal rate of substitution. The reason it is downwards sloping is because more of one product means fewer units of the other for the total utility to remain the same or the marginal rate of substitution of one good for the other. And as a consequence, you get a convex curve because the slope of the curve reflects an increasing unwillingness to substitute B for A as more of B is obtained. So if we look here, these are examples where we get the same utility. So in combinations J, K, L, and M, we're mixing up A and B here, so we can have 12A and 2B, 6A and 4B, 4A and 6B, or 3A and 8B. All of these would give us the same amount of utility. So in this case, starting at the beginning, the consumer uh, would give up A for B. So in this case, if the consumer has a lot of A and very little of B, combination J, B is more valuable at the margin where A is a lower marginal utility. So the consumer would be willing to give up a good amount of A to get more of B. However, as they obtain more and more of B points L and M, they're not really gonna wanna give up much more product A to get more B. Remember, the more of a product you get, you're gonna get less and less and less increasing utility. And this is why we have that decreasing slope and it's convex to the origin, the curve. So that's why this curve looks the way it does. So an indifference map is a series of indifference curves where each curve reflects different amounts of utility and each curve as it moves outward reflects a higher level. So this is an indifference map. 
So curves further from the origin show higher amounts of utility. And remember, everybody gets different utility from different products, so that's why we have this map here. So if we want to try to find someone's equilibrium, well, your indifference curve is going to be tangent to your budget line. And where it's tangent to the budget line is going to be where your utility is maximized. And your MRS will equal the ratio of price of B to the price of A. So let's take a look at what we mean by this. So here's our indifference map. Here's our budget line. So the equilibrium position for the consumer is at point X where the slope of the budget line and the slope of the curve are equal. So that red curve is the consumer we're interested in, and it is touching the budget line at point X. That's what we mean by tangential to it. Meaning at quantity 4A and 6B, this is going to be the maximum utility for this consumer. Point W is a higher utility, but the problem with point W is it's not within the bounds of your budget. Remember, this consumer's budget is the black line, so curve number four with point W is beyond the means of this consumer. Uh, curve two and one are within the means of this consumer, but it is not going to be the maximum amount. So combinations of one and two can be purchased on curves one and two, but the utility is lower. Now if we look here, Here's two examples. So when the price of product B is increased from a dollar to a dollar fifty, the equilibrium is going to move. It's going to move from X, which is right here, touching the budget line, to this one here, X with the apostrophe over it. The reason being we now need a whole new budget line here because B got a lot more expensive. We can't buy up to 12 units of B anymore. We can only buy up to eight. So we now have a new budget line. And as a consequence, we now have a new equilibrium point. And that's what happened here. So product B, as it gets more expensive, there's going to be less demand for it. So originally our demand was six at a dollar and that's exactly where we were achieving equilibrium before now it's fallen to three and that's where our new equilibrium is why it got more expensive as something gets more expensive the quantity demanded is always going to drop and that's going to take us to the end of our appendix slides